So this is the zoo's current setup. It's a 5 by 2 by 2 glass tank and you can see how it is currently. This is how they had it before. They wanted to redo it so I offered to set up a large bioactive for them in exchange for letting me make a video. Before even going to the zoo, both I and my girlfriend decided to make the drainage pipe at home and then bring it with us. So what we did was drill a hole in some PVC pipe, then cut along that hole. That made a divot at the bottom of the pipe. And then we cut off the other end to the appropriate length of the substrate depth we were going to go for. That divot at the bottom allows the water at the bottom of the glass tank to enter, which can then be siphoned out from the top, allowing the user to actually drain the drainage layer. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying out these cork pieces to get the idea and then I'm going to start working on the silicon. So the background's on, it's a full sided background, it was all the way around the sides. What I've done is use these spare pieces of wood to, to wedge them once they've been siliconed. Um, so this is what they're going to do for overnight, they're going to cure and then hopefully I can crack on with setting up the rest of it being bioactive and whatnot. And there's the drainage pipe right there. You can see along the join of those two tiles. That's why I've placed it because I thought if you pay, put a uh, piece of cork or a cork tube and you place it in front of that crack, then it hides the drainage pipe and it kind of hides the seam. So that's the first day done and Hopefully it'll be all ready tomorrow for me to move on and play with some mud. So after 24 hours of curing and drying, the background was set, the pipe was set. I'd removed all the logs and this is what we're working with now. You can see the vibe that we're trying to go for here. We're going for this woodland forest floor sort of vibe. So now we just have to work on our drainage layer and getting all the substrates and decorations in. So I'm going to just cut these open, tip them out, and then we'll see what, how many inches, if an inch, of drainage layer we have. So the drainage layer ended up being an inch or so thick, which is perfect. So I've poured this in, and now we need to start thinking about our separation barrier. Now, many people argue you should have a separation barrier between your drainage layer and your substrate. Some, like John Courtney Smith, argue that it's not needed. So what I've done here is I've gone for a halfway house. I'm using a thread fabric that I'm using as my separation barrier, but that also over time will rot. So as roots establish and create a network anyway, that barrier will kind of disappear with time anyway. So for this soil mix, what we've gone for is a mixture of topsoil to bark chips to cocoa fiber to sphagnum moss. It wasn't any kind of ratio or some master plan. I went with what felt right to me at the time and over time you generally get a feeling for how you want things to go. So I'm including this large log. The plan is to half bury this log so that when it rots from the bottom up it's going to feed the isopods and earthworms and you know the other custodians in there. But as we had to cut down these backgrounds what actually happened is that we ended up having like off cuts. So what I'm doing with this is it's quite clever really. I'm burying the remains of these off cuts so that as time goes on and these rot, they also provide little air pockets for isopods and springtails and earthworms. It's going to feed things as things go forward. So here what I'm doing is trying to work out my hardscape and how I want things to be placed in the vivarium. I know that I want the basking spot to be on the right because that'll be easier for the keepers to access and maintain because it's closer to the door. So this piece of driftwood on the right is the basking spot. Now I want some leading lines across this log uh, to channel your eyes from centre to the basking spot. And this log on the left, I wanted to offer some climbing opportunity, but also offer a dark space beneath it for the frogs to retreat to if they need to. So after actually adding in the rest of the substrate, I then started to play with the plants we have. Now we've collected some local heart's tongue fern, and this fits in perfectly with the theme, the style. They are a low light species, but can adapt quite well to open sun. So that middle ground, I think, is perfect for the jungle dawns and this type of setup so I'm thinking even though they are not something often seen in herpetoculture 
they will do quite well in this setup. Now to complete the woodland forest floor, deciduous woodland forest floor vibe that we're going for here, I had collected lots of leaf litter, it's mostly beech and oak leaves that I'd collected in October for my own animals. I've had them desiccating this entire time so they've gone bone dry, anything living on them has died off. I gave these to the zoo so they have a nice thick layer of leaf litter in that tank. It looks kind of fluffy now because there's a lot but as this matures this is going to break down into like a leaf litter mulch and become much more flatter and it's going to lock in a human microclimate beneath them too so that's going to aid in not only the plants but the custodians but if the frogs want to dig down and burrow down into it to access a microclimate they can do. So as well as looking really cool and fitting the theme, it actually adds a lot of functionality. So once the tropical grey ice pods had been added, the setup was complete. The only thing left after this was to stand back, have a good look at it before adding the frogs in. So this is the largest bioactive I've ever done. It's a 5x2x2. By two by two the largest I've ever done is an Exoterra, so as you can imagine, none of the Exoterras even match the scale or size of a setup like this. So the outcome of this I am very proud of, I'm very happy that it came out like this. Imagine if I volunteered to do this and then the end result was like meh. But I'm glad the keepers were very very happy with it. The heating and lighting in this is a 50 watt Arcadia halogen in the Arcadia dome with two jungle dawns and a T5 HO UVB bar. Now I did take my solar meter in so it is achieving a UVI of around 1.5 to 2 at the basking spot mm -hmm. with the basking spot surface temperature on that log around 28 degrees. I'm not really concerned about it being too high or too low a basking temperature. It's actually not on a thermostat at all because it really doesn't need it. I'm not concerned at any point with this overheating anything. The brilliant thing about it being glass is that it loses a lot of heat which means you can just have your basking lamp on at full power without any concern with it overheating the entire viv because you know any excess heat is going to be released. So people say glass is a poor choice for a setup because it doesn't retain heat but in some circumstances it can be a positive and even something that you want to actually go for. So there are four European tree frogs, I think they're going to do very very well in this setup. Now if you want to see this setup in person and if you're in the UK, this zoo is the New Forest Wildlife Park. Now I think this would be a good time to announce that I'm doing a in-depth, very detailed bioactive series on each component of bioactivity in um, great detail. So. If this is something that you're interested in, now's the time to subscribe for when this series comes out. And if you want a full tour of the zoo to see what the collection is like, then I have another video on that.